Greetings, 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 everyone. It's Nina Baysmore. I hope you're having a very blessed morning. We know that it's time. It's time for us to have our health and healing class. If you're new, if you've never been here before, we have been meeting here every couple of weeks, every other Saturday. We meet here at 10 a.m. So if this is your first time, I hope that you are blessed by what I'm going to share and that you will consider subscribing and coming back again when we meet again. Today we're going to be talking about detoxification, but before I start with that, just in case there's anyone here that's new, I just want to share with you what we do um, offer to you here on this channel when we meet live and when we meet uh, any other time. So uh, I want to define holistic, just in case you're not very familiar with that terminology. Uh, to define holistic, we're just speaking about the alignment of the spirit, the soul, and the body. I do have uh, scripture references in the description box, so I do encourage you to read the description box. There's also other information in the description box that I share with you. So the scripture references will be there, but the Bible does speak that we are spirit, soul, and body, and we do need to be um, in alignment. We need to have an alignment of our spirits. We need to have an alignment of our souls and our bodies so that we can uh, live our optimal lives so that we can be the highest uh, beings that we're called to be. So these uh, classes are designed to educate you. They're designed to uh, motivate you to be an excellent steward over all that God has entrusted to you. And our topics, they include nutrition, uh, medicinal herbs, uh, naturopathy, natural health remedies, uh, anything that's related, once again, to holistic health and well-being. That's what we're going to cover on these uh, uh, live um, uh, classes. I also want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel if you have not. It is free. It's free to subscribe. And if you click on the notifications button every time I'm here, um, you will uh, receive a notification that I'm either live or I've posted uh, a video. Sometimes I post just on the community channel. So just go ahead and subscribe. If you are liking what I'm sharing with you, please give us a like. Please share. Feel free to leave comments. You can reach out to me in the comment section if you have a question as well. You can also reach out to me directly. The email address is in the description box. So we just want you to know that we're here for you. Um, we have um, a prayer group on Facebook. So you'll find all that information on the um, in the description box. So this morning, I'm just going to get started with you. We know that we're getting full, looking forward to the, uh, the the season of spring. We're moving into spring, transitioning into spring, and many of us know that during this time, we get ready. We want to cleanse. Uh, we want to uh, purify. We want to uh, detoxify. And we don't just do that always uh, just with ourselves, spirit, soul, and body, but even our surroundings. We want our environment. It's time for renewal. It's time to be uh, to be refreshed. It's, it's time for new beginnings. It's, it's time to uh, tackle maybe some things that you've been putting off for a while and maybe you've been hibernating, uh, so to speak, during the colder uh, weeks and months, and now you're just ready uh, for all of that that you have reflected upon, all of that that you have received. You're just ready. So it's a good time to cleanse and to wash and to purify. I do know that the human body, we were made, the body does naturally detoxify, that the body is made to detoxify. But because of how we live, some of the choices that we make, maybe we've been living longer, uh, it's good to assist the body sometimes. It's good to assist and to help and to do what we can do to make the process, to make it a lot more efficient. Uh, sometimes you just need to just let go of some things. Uh, sometimes you just need to allow some things to, uh, some blockages to be removed. Maybe there's some stagnation uh, that you need to deal with during this time. So it's good to know that there are ways that we can assist our spirits, our souls, and our bodies as they come into alignment, as they get ready for this newness, as they get ready for the refreshing and the rejuvenation and the replenishing that we all look forward to during this time. Uh, if you're here, just go ahead and uh, let me know that you're here in the chat box. Uh, but we just look forward to this time, and I hope that you are as excited as I am. So we know that that's going to be the spring equinox is scheduled. If my memory is serving me correctly, it should be for Tuesday, uh, Tuesday coming of this week. So we have a few days. You can start preparing if you don't have everything in place that you think that you might need to get ready for what's coming. So uh, we're just uh, excited once again. And I hope that there are no technical difficulties. I'm noticing that um, here that um, on, I'm looking at, a, at my tablet and it looks like there might be some technical difficulties. So hopefully that's not the case. I see that I am live here where I'm speaking. So uh, this is recorded. So if there are, are any technical difficulties, 
I will be um, posting this. This will be posted under the live tab on the channel. I do recall uh, hitting a couple of buttons earlier, so maybe there's something going on with, um, uh, with, uh, with the technology right now. So let's uh, still get into this. So again, detoxification, cleansing, purifying the season uh, that we're in. You know that I'm known as the detox prophet, and that just speaks to me being very, very intentional as it relates to letting go of the things we don't need uh, in our spirits, in our souls, in our bodies, there's ways that we can do that. And I'm going to focus today, though, more on the physical, more on the body. We might have to break this up into two uh, recordings, two uh, live classes, so that we can also address the spirit and the soul. Even though I will be addressing all three here as, as I focus on the physical, but I might feel led to spend more time on the soul and the body because they do all three need to be in alignment for us to have that optimal health uh, that we're all looking for. So uh, the daily cleansing, as I said, we are made, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what the Bible says. And so we have been made so that we do detox uh, during the day. And we know that, as I said, when we are out, uh, even sometimes even in our own uh, homes, uh, depending on those types of products that we use, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, what's going on in the environment around us, we know that we have to be continuously, continually just cleansing, just letting go of the things we don't need, the things that don't serve us, the things that might be interfering uh, with our wholeness, the things that might be interfering with our health, our well-being, our peace, all of those things. And so if we are intentional, because uh, detoxification, the process of detoxification does require discipline, I really believe in prevention. You know that. I've been saying that for years. I believe that it's better to prevent. And prevent as much as we can prevent is a lot, not only is it better, but it's a lot easier. It's easier to prevent than it is to try to tackle a situation, a condition, a circumstance um, after it has occurred. So when we just look around and we take notice of uh, what we're dealing with on a daily basis, then we get strategies. We learn the strategies that we can use uh, so that we're able to do what we need to do um, uh, at the, when the time comes. And so daily cleansing and detoxification, as I said, it's, it's necessary for overall wellness. However, we know that springtime, as I've been sharing, is an opportunity for us to just intensify and to focus on those things that we need to do, letting go of, as I said, making room for, as I said, expecting newness, as I've said. And to do this uh, holistically, we do need to incorporate and align. I just want you to keep focusing on that. There's our spirits, our souls, and our bodies. We have to be, those have to be in alignment. And so we have to know what is available to us to assist us with the process. Again, we're just assisting. The body is, is, has been made uh, to detoxify, to purify, uh, to renew, to heal. Uh, so we're just assisting with it. And so as we assist, when we think about the things that we need to be intentional about, let's just start with food. We need to be intentional about our meal planning. We need to know the types of foods that will help us to detoxify, the types of food that will help us to um, replenish and to rejuvenate. We need to know what's available to us. And especially if you're doing a spring detoxification, if you're just assisting your process and you're uh, focusing on this time of the year, this season. So knowing those uh, foods and those herbs and um, those methodologies that we can incorporate into our daily lives will help us to get to the place that we're moving. So let's start with food, as I said, with nutrition. Most of us are very familiar with dandelion leaves. Uh, if you've ever done a spring cleanse, if you've ever uh, thought about uh, the, the herbs that you can use for detoxification, most of us are familiar with dandelion leaves and we know that they grow around us. Many uh, look at them as weeds, uh, but they are excellent. Uh, the dandelion leaves uh, especially, they are an excellent, excellent part of the plant to include when you are assisting your liver, when you're assisting your body in that detoxification process. Now, uh, a dandelion is considered an, a bitter herb and we need bitter herbs to help us, especially when we're doing a more intentional cleanse. Bitter herbs are very necessary. They help the liver, they help the detoxification process. And because they are bitter, uh, sometimes they can have a very strong uh, taste 
and sometimes it is an acquired taste. You'll just have to be creative and think of some things that you can do so that you're able, if it's too strong for you so that, or too bitter for you, so, uh, so that you can incorporate a dandelion into your meal planning. You can, a dandelion is in the, can be uh, found in the form of tea. So, uh, you can add dandelion leaves to a salad. You can add a, a dandelion leaves uh, to a smoothie. Uh, you can uh, prepare dandelion leaves as you would prepare any of your other uh, greens. So just thinking about these bitters, dandelion chamomile, you can drink that as a tea as well. Uh, thinking about um, burdock, thinking about milk thistle, making sure that milk thistle is also known, has been very well studied, very well documented that it does assist the liver. And, the, uh, and also uh, there's uh, those types of diuretic herbs that will help when you're detoxifying. I talked about uh, maybe a couple of classes ago, we talked about stinging nettle. And we know too, those leaves can also be found in the form of tea, if that's something a little bit easier for you to take in. But you can also just, just use all of these herbs and all of the uh, different foods I'm going to be sharing with you today. You can just use them in, their, uh, in various ways. That way you're getting them into your system in various ways. Some of these plants are fat soluble, uh, 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 water soluble, and some of them, you know, there's the things that we uh, need to think about when we're adding these uh, plants to our meal planning, uh, determining how we're able to get the most of the nutri uh, nutritional value that they offer, whether or not they're better in their raw form, uh, whether, whether or not it would be better maybe if you had a tincture, an extract, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll do more of your own homework, you'll research, you'll uh, feel led of, of that which will serve you and what's good for you so that you can have all of these in, um, in place for you uh, when you need them. Slippery elm is also uh, something you might want to consider. Chlorella, uh, you know chlorella is an algae and it's, it has been known to be used when you're really trying to intensify that detoxification process. So seaweed, we know uh, chlorella, uh, seaweed, all of those, uh, those are really good for helping the body with what it's trying to do to process what it needs to process and to do for us uh, what needs to be done. So uh, those are just a few, those are just a few. Of course, they're not all of them. And um, there are different parts of the plants, uh, depending on the herb you're going to select, there are different parts of the plants that can be used, and some of uh, the parts are more efficient uh, uh, than others, and uh, some of them uh, need a different type of preparation, such as if you're using the root of a plant, you'll know that the preparation of that root is a little bit different than, say, for instance, if you're using the leaves. So you'll, you'll, if you're new to all of this, uh, you can look at our channel, go to the um, health and wellness, I think it's called health and wellness, um, playlist and we have several videos uh, as it relates to health and wellness on this channel. I do encourage you to just uh, go ahead on and just uh, review the channel and look at all the, uh, we have hundreds of videos on this channel. Some of them are more um, uh, uh, ministry based but we do have that health and wellness playlist that might help you with any questions you have about some of the things that you can incorporate into your life and uh, to make your environment and your life uh, a little bit more um, uh, cleansed and washed and purified. I'm thinking because I also have two other channels. Uh, we do have a Neil Holistic Health Therapies channel, and that channel is uh, dedicated to health and wellness holistically. That information is in the description box. And I have another channel, uh, Nina Base More 60 and Beyond. Uh, so for those of us who are of a certain age, uh, you might find that interesting, especially if you're looking for some exercises, which I'm going to get to that in a moment, but exercising is a definite must uh, if we want to help with that detoxification process. So you can go to um, Miel Holistic Health Therapies or 60 and Beyond, and you'll be able to find some of those exercises. They're very, very, very beginner friendly. If you've never, if you haven't been exercising in a while, or maybe you haven't exercised, or maybe you have limited mobility. Um, I have some very slow moving, very um, peaceful, soothing uh, uh, movements there that, that will help anyone stretching and, and uh, getting more flexible and, and getting, more, uh, getting stronger. So I just wanted to sh uh, share that with you real quick while it's on my mind, and hopefully you'll go to the description box and you can get some more information about that. So we're just talking about a little bit more about the, uh, those types of foods. So green leafy vegetables. So you just want to be eating plenty of salads. Just think about that. How, not, not necessarily just salads, but how can you incorporate 
more vegetables, more leafy green vegetables, more of these herbs, more of the spices? How can you incorporate them into your daily life every day? So beginning with the first meal of the day until your last meal of the day, what can you do to incorporate these uh, things that I'm sharing with you? So you might have to start thinking about what you're really having uh, for breakfast and how can you add vegetables to your breakfast, some green leafy uh Green, uh, green, green leaves uh, to, your, to your breakfast if you haven't done that already. Um, thinking about citrus fruits, citrus fruits, especially lemons and grapefruit and oranges, really good uh, for this process that we're in, this detoxification process. Also getting uh, the vitamin C that we need from those citrus um, uh, 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 fruits. So how can you just add those throughout your day? Thinking about maybe, um, and especially if you are really, really watching what you eat. And I know that many of you might have some health. You might have some health conditions that you have to be aware of. So again, I'm not giving you any medical advice. If you do have someone who's helping you with your nutrition, if uh, your physician has given you, of course, uh, prescriptions for what you should and should not do, of course, I know you're going to follow uh, uh, the advice of those uh, professional healthcare providers who know you, who know your system, who knows what you're going through and who know what you need. You're going to just follow their advice. I'm just here to just educate. This is just for educational purposes only. It's not medical advice. And when I give, especially when I give that equation for how much water someone should be drinking, if you have some kidney issues, you're not going to necessarily use that equation. Uh, you also may have some allergies. There are gonna be some herbs that I mentioned and they just I might not agree with you. But we're so thankful to God that if that one herb doesn't work, there's some other herbs that, that have even, that have, uh, even, if not the same, even, uh, you know, more benefits that will help you in the process. So don't be discouraged. There's something for everyone. When you look at Genesis 129, we know that uh, God gave us the herbs for food. So we know that everything that we need, he's going to provide. God is going to provide it for you. It might take some more of you just seeking him out and seeking out and searching and uh, being led. But if you're really uh, serious about this, and you really want to live a higher life and just want to be healthier, you want to move more, you want to breathe better, you want to think better, uh, you want to be able to enjoy life more, you want to serve more, uh, these things are going to help you and um, uh, we're going to keep praying for you that you will be able to reach those goals that you have for yourself. So um, I'll come back to that. Parsley is another diet. It's considered a diuretic. Parsley is considered a diuretic. So again, it's going to help you to cleanse out and to, as you're drinking uh, plenty of fluids and staying hydrated, uh, you'll be thankful that uh, these um, herbs are available to you to help you with that. And knowing also, as I shared the last class, when you're eat, when we're eating vegetables, these green leafy vegetables, we know that uh, the majority of their content is water, so they help to keep us hydrated. Even think about broth, you know, if you're going to really cut down. I do know that some during the season that we're in, this resurrection season, there are many who are fasting even right now. So maybe they're fasting and they're adding maybe some bone broth uh, or some type of broth. Uh, to what they're uh, taking in. So just, just thinking about what you can do to still stay healthy, but you're still getting stronger. You're, you're getting, uh, you're cleansing, you're washing, you're purifying. Uh, things are coming together for you. And so we're going to keep on moving asparagus. If I didn't mention that, you know, you want beets. Beets are good for the blood. And so uh, look into beets. And uh, if that's not something that you are interested in preparing for yourself, you can find many of these in uh, supplement form. Of course, I do encourage to the degree that we're able, to the extent that you're able, try to just get all of your nutritional value from foods. And of course, that can be very challenging, you know, thinking about everything that we're hearing and what these, what the foods are going, how they're being grown, and et cetera, et cetera. But we do our best to get as much as we can from our foods. And then if you uh, either through uh, lab testing find that you are deficient in some uh, nu nutrients, then of course supplements uh, will be uh, there for you. When you're thinking about supplements, you want to think about supplements that are based on whole foods, based on uh, you know whole food. So again, in the description box, I have some information about, I think maybe there's one or two brands that I know of, that I have experience with, that we know that they're, they're just basically powdered food. And so that's the direction that I generally go in when I'm looking for a supplement. I want it to be food-based. I want it to be a whole food that has been powdered and just added to a capsule so that basically I'm just taking in food in a capsule form. And that's what you want. And then that way you, you probably 
won't experience many of the side effects that can sometimes happen if you're using uh, supplements that are more synthetically produced. So I wanted to share that with you as well. And we know that those, uh, as I was mentioning, the green leafy, but we know the cruciferous vegetables as well. We're thinking about cabbage, we're thinking about broccoli, uh, those types of, um, of, of, of foods. Also, these will help us with our fiber intake. And so that's good too when we're going through this detoxification process. So I wanted to share those things with you as it relates to food. And now I just want to move on to, not only we're we going to be thinking about food, I did briefly just now mention water. Basically, that equation that I share with anyone, with everyone, forgive me, that I um, am asked about, it's your weight divided by two, and that will equal the number of ounces of water that you should have per day. So if someone weighs 100 pounds, you divide that by two, uh, you get 50, that person would need 50 ounces of water per day, give or take. So if they're more athletic, they, they're, you know, they're more active during the day, maybe they need a little more water. Maybe they're more sedentary. They don't move as much. They don't, they, you know, then they would not necessarily need as much. If you have a health condition, though, this equation may not work for you. This is just a general equation. Your weight divided by two equals the number of ounces of water you should have per day. And as most of you know, many of you know, I am um, an exercise instructor as well. And I specialize in the population of 60 and beyond. And so I believe in movement, movement therapy, moving. And moving is so important. I know most of you, if not all of you, if you've ever gone to any type of healthcare professional, I know that they have encouraged you to move more. Even if they suggest walking, whatever it is, we need to move. We move so that the oils, uh, forgive me, the joints are oiled with that synovial fluid. Or we move so that we are uh, helping our bodies to breathe better. We move so that we can help the lymphatic system. We just need to keep moving so that the body functions optimally. So there are different ways of moving. Not everyone enjoys everything. I many times um, have specialized in chair, well I do specialize in chair exercise, as I said, because the population that I serve is generally 60 and beyond. And so there's limited mobility. Maybe there are just some health issues uh, that people are dealing with. And so I specialize in chair exercises. I've found them to be extremely effective for those uh, that I serve. I think that um, if you're just beginning as well, maybe you're not, maybe you're younger than 60 and that's okay. Uh, this is all good for every age group. So if you just wanna start out with something very basic as I shared with you in the beginning of this um, video, then I do have, uh, I don't know, I think I have maybe 20, 30, perhaps um, exercise videos on YouTube. So you can also feel free to look at any other videos on YouTube that will serve you better. But you, I just want you to move. Uh, you want to move and you want to think about moving every part of your body. You notice that when I'm speaking, I'm kind of moving just a little bit because the, um, the, the research has shown that we really need to be moving after every 20 minutes or so. We really want to go ahead and to move um, every 20 minutes or so. So if you're sitting at a desk, if you're in a car and you're uh, you know, driving for more than 20 minutes, maybe you're a passenger, you're, maybe you're even driving, uh, we need to think about, once again, moving from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. We want to move every single joint. We want to move our fingers and we want to move our toes and we want to move um, you know, our elbows. You know, We don't always think of that, but we need to move all the muscles, think about the eye muscles. You notice I'm opening my eyes a bit. We have muscles in the eye. Just think from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Think of ways you can move. So that's just if you're just, you know, uh, at a desk or maybe, as I said, you're in a car and just maybe you're not able to get to where you um, can really do uh, an intentional workout, so to speak. Uh, but when you can uh, perform those intentional workouts or those exercise therapies uh, that you've um, uh, come to, um, to know, then when you can get there, again, think about cardiovascular system. Think about breathing. Think about uh, becoming more flexible. Thinking about more functional exercises. And when I say functional exercises, exercises that will help you with your daily activities. So those muscles that you use and those joints that you use on a daily basis, you just want to make sure that you are um, in incorporating movements into your workout, as we call them, uh, you know, we can call them exercise, whatever you want to call them, exercise ther therapy, movement therapy, all I care about is that we're moving. So incorporate those 
uh, make sure you're incorporating in those movements every part of your body. And as I said, try not to neglect any part. It's important that you're breathing well, especially when you're exercising, because you need that. We only need, uh, we need the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. So we all know we breathe in oxygen. We all know that we exhale. So we inhale oxygen and we exhale carbon dioxide. But the body only needs a little bit of carbon dioxide to mix with the oxygen. And so what happens is when you're breathing, the exhalation should be a little longer than the inhalation. You bring in that uh, oxygen, we all have different levels of lung capacity. Uh, you can increase that lung capacity, but you bring in as much uh, of that breath as you, as you can, and you want to fill your lungs uh, if, if, if possible to capacity. I know many of you have some, some health conditions, but we do our best. And then you exhale. And if, when you're breathing in and out through the nostrils, and I do have a video on this, so just go ahead and search for it on one of the channels I mentioned to you. But I do teach that um, nostril breathing, that technique that helps us to shift into the parasympathetic state of the nervous system. And that's where all healing, that's where all healing takes place, when we're in the parasympathetic state of the um, nervous system. Uh, we know that when you're in the sympathetic state, that's that fight or flight, uh, that's that um, anxious time, that's that time where maybe you feel like uh, there's danger and you just want to uh, survive and you want to protect yourself. That's that sy sympathetic state. That's when the cortisol is produced the most and that's when the adrenal glands are really moving. We know the adrenals sit on top of the kidneys. That's when the body is just in survival mode. But we want to be in the parasympathetic state. That's where all healing takes place and we can we can just focus on our breathing. Breathing in and out through the nostrils, through your nose, has been researched and proven that it will help to lower your blood pressure. It'll shift you over, as I said, into that parasympathetic state. So uh, you'll notice that I speak about that in many of my exercise um, videos as well. Ways that you can just calm down, relax, allow yourself to just be at peace and to be in the moment so that you can bring into alignment your spirit, your soul, and your body. That's what we're speaking about when we speak about this holistically. So, that's, um, so that is what's really, really um, excellent as it relates to the movement. When we're moving, we're just helping things, this, uh, help, helping things to flow. Sometimes you have some stagnant, some, uh, stagnant um, energy, some stagnation in the body. Sometimes there's some blockages. We talked, I believe, the class, uh, a class or two ago, we even talked about many times when you're hearing those sounds uh, in your joints when you move, Many times that's just trapped gas, just trapped gas. The Nobel fluid has uh, the gases. Sometimes they get trapped, and then when you start to move, you can just hear the popping. And so as, as long as there's no pain, again, I'm always going to keep uh, stressing. I'm not giving you any medical advice. Always seek uh, uh, the professional advice of your healthcare provider. However, many times that's just gases. So many times what we're doing when we're moving, we're helping, helping those uh, helping that stagnation, helping those fluids that need to flow freely, and maybe they're just a little bit stagnant right now, helping them to flow better, gas to be released. All of the things that happen when we move that we don't think about, and that's why it's so important. So I'll, I'll repeat again, every 20 minutes or so, if possible, if you've been sitting for 20 minutes, if it's possible for you to move, get up and move, please do. Even if you're at your desk and all you do is stand up, you don't have to go anywhere. Maybe you just stand up and do a little bit of stretches side to side, get the right and the left side of your body open a little bit more. Maybe you move your neck around a little bit more. Uh, studies have shown that many people carry their stress in their shoulders and in their neck and their lower back, uh, in their hip area. So those areas where you feel like you carry your stress, if you ever find yourself touching your shoulders or maybe you touch your temples or whatever, that's your body letting you know that you're a little bit stressed out. Maybe a little bit of movement will help to relieve some of that that you're feeling. So if you can't even leave your desk or you can't leave the space that you're in, you can still move in some way. I might not, I'm here, it's been more than 20 minutes since I've been sharing. I'm in my chair, but I've been tapping my feet a little bit. You notice my head moves a little bit, my hands are moving. You maybe, you don't see them, but I'm allowing those joints in my hands to move. Maybe I move my shoulders a bit, but just keep moving just a little bit. Especially when we're sitting, where the blood is not circulating as well as it would circulate if we were standing. So think about that as well. I, in my classes, I, I, uh, we, we tap our feet. And we just tap the feet every so often because, as I said, most of my uh, classes are, are chair-based. We tap our feet, making sure that blood is circulating as well as it should be circulating. So, again, this is all still about 
helping that detoxification process that many of you are in, especially during this time of the year. If you're just joining me, and maybe you're a little later joining me, just want to let you know that, of course, this is uh, uh, it's live now, but it will uh, be on the um, channel, and you can see the replay. You can see me from, from the beginning. Go back to the replay under the live tab on the channel. And so we talked about nutrition. We talked about some of the foods, the herbs, and the foods that are good to help the body to assist with the detoxification process. We've talked about water. I've given you the equation for water. Uh, we have um, talked about exercise. We talked about breathing techniques and how important it is to breathe well. Also, we want to talk about rest. If you'll go back to maybe either the, um, the first live video that's on this channel or I believe on the community tab, there's a summary of, the, um, of one of the classes. We talked uh, at great length about how important it is that we rest and we get enough sleep. We talked about what happens, especially as it relates to detoxification. What happens when we're sleeping? That's why getting enough sleep and at the right time is so important. We talked about the organs, so please go back to those videos. We talked about what happens at certain times of the night when we're sleeping. We talked about how the cells move in, and, uh, how the minerals move in and out of the cells, and how the cleansing is taking place based on those macro minerals, potassium and sodium and calcium. Um, which one did I leave? And magnesium. We talked about those, the uh, potassium and the magnesium for night. We talked about the calcium and the sodium for during the day, how that all works together in the detoxification process. And when we get to bed at the time that we should, then the organs can start cleansing and all of that uh, purification can take place, the detoxification, so that when we wake up in the morning, we wake up refreshed. Many times people are waking up, they're not refreshed, they don't feel replenished, they don't feel rejuvenated because they don't have enough minerals. They don't have enough minerals in the body. They don't have the nourishment, the, nut uh, the nutrients that they need to help the detoxification process that happens. So please go back, look at those videos. Please go back and even to the community tab and find, find that summary uh, that spoke to us about that. And that'll help you as well. And maybe it'll motivate you to get more sleep It'll motivate you to maybe get to bed at a, at a time that is uh, best and optimal for your detoxification, your cleansing, and those organs that are waiting for you to rest so that they can be uh, replenished and rejuvenated and you can wake up in the morning ready for a new day. Okay, his mercy is new every morning. So we talked about that self-care. All of this basically, if you think about it, is self-care. Self-care and just being able to... Um, self-care is not just about always... Um, what we're doing. We know that even what we're not doing. But one thing I do want to mention, I've been sharing this also with my uh, with my classes recently. We know that uh, many times if, if you're one who is within the healthcare system and you maybe see uh, some type of healthcare provider, someone who is helping you to, uh, to, to live your optimal uh, healthy life, many times they don't have a lot of time. Now we who are in the natural uh, medicine uh, field, we try to give more time than those who are in that, what we consider to be the traditional uh, medical system. So you might not get as much time with a physician as you're going to get with a, a naturopath, etc. But what I'm, I, I say all this to say, there are things that you can do so that when you see that professional, you, can, you, you, you have made some observations on your own about your own body, and you can bring that to them, and you can ask them, of course, for their advice. So the same way there's some types, some, there's some type of uh, exams. For instance, women do the uh, uh, self, uh, the breast examination. Then maybe they can see their physician and you know share anything they may have found. Uh, you can look at your own face. You can look at your own eyes. You can look at your own tongue. You can look at your own skin. You can look at yourself. You can think about what those healthcare providers do when you go into the office. And you can look in your own eyes, and if you see some changes, maybe you want to bring that to their attention. You can look at your skin. If you see some changes, bring that to their attention. Look at your tongue. Uh, if you see some changes, maybe your gums are bleeding, and you bring that to their attention. Uh, of course, they may refer you out to a specialist, but sometimes, think about it, sometimes the gums are bleeding because you're uh, deficient in vitamin C. I'm not saying that's always the case, but that sometimes is how the body speaks to us. If I'm looking at someone and maybe the... Um, the left side of their mouth is turned down a bit, then they probably, not always, not giving you medical advice, but it's possible, I'll just say it's possible, that they have a sodium deficiency. And when I say sodium, 
not speaking about table salt at all, not about table salt at all, but they may have a sodium deficiency, meaning they're not getting enough vegetables. They're not getting enough of the minerals, uh, especially that sodium mineral that we talked about a little earlier. Sodium plays a part as we've talked about the magnesium and the potassium and the sodium and the calcium. So uh, maybe I look at the right side and maybe that, that right side's turned down a little bit, a little more. Uh, then they, maybe they are deficient in potassium. Not saying that's always the case, just saying there's some things we can look at. We can notice changes and bring those changes that we notice to a professional. Sometimes people get cracks in the sides of their mouths. That's an indication. Sometimes people, uh, their eyes might be twitching or they start to twitch um, all of a sudden. That just could be that there's a deficiency in some type of a, a, nutri a, a nutrient that your body needs. So just taking note of the things. What I'm saying is, remember, when I started out and what I've been saying for all the years, for those of you who've been with me for years, I believe in prevention. It's a lot easier to prevent than it is to go in and address these situations and these circumstances and these conditions that occur than when we just ignore them. So don't ignore, I believe the body talks to us, don't ignore your body. If you see a change, think about it. Maybe you, when you see a change, uh, maybe if you start noticing that there's a part of your body that, as I, that, is, um, that is exhibiting those, um, uh, symptoms, I would call them, that I just shared with you. Don't ignore them, but think about, is there anything that you're going through at the time that might be, might be requiring you to increase, increase uh, the nutrients that you're receiving? Are you going through stress? Are you know, are you going through some things in your life that are just drawing away from you? Um, because many times when you're going through stress, many times when there are other things that are going on in them and remember I, early in this uh, video i said i would speak to the spirit soul and body many times when there are things going on in the spirit and the soul you can be eating as well as i'm uh, sharing with you and uh, you can be exercising you can be doing all these things self-care but if the spirit the soul and the body are not in alignment just because you're bringing those nutrients in the body has to really be able to receive the nutrients your digestion needs to be um, at a level that those nutrients are, are getting into your system. So that's why all of this goes together. We have to be very mindful of what we're thinking about because what we're thinking about leads to what we're talking about and generally that leads to how we start to act. So we want to have that holistic approach, spirit, soul, and body. My time is coming to an end. I don't see anyone here in the chat. If you're here, and you're able to just send me a message. I see that we do have some. As I said, I think that there was a technical, uh, there's some type of technical uh, challenge, for lack of a better, a better term, that's going on. And I hope everyone um, was able to find me over here. It's uh, possible that I hit a button I shouldn't have hit and that I, I'm, on the, um, I'm on two times. So we'll see how that works, but this is recorded and so it'll be up. Share it with um, those that you uh, feel led to share this with. And again, I'm gonna wait a few minutes just in case anyone can chat. I, um, I will wait a few minutes, but I'm gonna bring this to a close. So we talked about uh, the food, we talked about the water, we talked about the exercise, we talked about the breathing techniques, we've talked about rest, we've talked about self-care, we've talked about self-exams and uh, looking at our own eyes. I've studied, as you know, I've, I have studied, uh, have studied um, how the eyes can give us so much um, information about our health and so the eyes as the bible says it's in the bible the eye i'm paraphrasing oh shalom oh i'm glad you were able to get here sister harris thank you thank you for being here i hope everybody else could get here right uh sister harris I, I i have it set for two times and i saw that um it's on here twice and i don't see many people here but hopefully they'll find us but i'm glad you were able to make it um so um so uh, looking in the eyes, as I was saying, and um, the Bible says that the, um, and I'm paraphrasing, that the eyes are the windows to the soul. So we need to just make sure that we are paying attention. Uh, we thought, I didn't talk too much about healing touch, uh, healing touch therapy. I really believe that that's important as well, because I mentioned to you that um, not only do we need to move, but we also need to make sure that our lymphatic system and the lymphatic system is very, very involved in the um, immune system. And the lymphatic system also, it, it requires movement in order for it to uh, be as efficient as, as possible. So um, we can also apply pressure to our own bodies. Um, maybe next time, as I said, I'm running out of time right now. I'll talk a little bit more about healing touch. 
uh, uh, healing touch therapy. I'll talk a little bit more about some of the other modalities and other things that we can do to help to reduce stress, especially if you're a caregiver or just, you know, whatever you might be going through in life and you just need some ways. Uh, we know, of course, we always seek the Lord in prayer. We know that uh, his word always brings us peace and comfort, but I do believe he also gives us other strategies that we can use so that we are a part. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good to see you. Good to see you, sister. Good to see you. Glad you're here. And um, I hope you were here for the entire time. If, if not, uh, the replay will be available. Uh, probably it takes about a couple hours before the replay is available, but the replay is going to be available. So as I was saying, Healing Touch, we'll cover a little bit more of that because you can you can lay hands on yourself, amen. Um, and we know that um, because Jesus lives in us and he is our healer, that we can lay hands on ourselves and the things that we can do. Uh, what did I say? Stress reduction, I think I was talking about. And just remember too, as I've been sharing that those, um, forgive me with the sounds and the movement, just uh, remember that um, those adrenal glands, they sit on top of the kidneys. We know the kidneys are in the back and those adrenal glands, they sit on top of the kidneys. And when you're stressed out, so we're gonna think about things that we can do to just help to strengthen our bodies. I wanted to mention this very quickly before I have to uh, be off. Um, you know that I follow the biblical calendar. There's a, again, I have teachings on, I have teachings on the Gregorian calendar and it's, you know, how it's a man-made calendar, et cetera, and God has his own calendar. But we're in this, uh, we're in um, Adar 2. Because this is a leap year on the biblical calendar, it's considered Adar 2. There was, uh, we just, we just phased out of Adar 1. We're now in Adar 2. We know that the, on the biblical calendar, this is year 5784. So on the Gregorian calendar, we know that we are here with today. I think today's March uh, 16th, 2024. But on the uh, biblical calendar, we're, we're on uh, the, the calendar's uh, a DAR2, and it, the year is 5784. But I just wanted to bring uh, to your attention, uh, just because I was thinking about this, but um, the, the word, the Adar, the name Adar means strength and power. And this is a DAR2. So I believe that the Lord God is strengthening us even more than we could even ask for, and that His power, His grace, His power is sufficient. If the Bible says he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So I just hope as I'm ending this right now, if you want to be in the chat, go ahead and I'm, I'm ending it, this in a, probably about a minute or two. I'm going to pray. Um, and so you still have time to uh, let me know you're here. Give me an amen that you're, you know, you're here, whatever you want to do, however you're led. Uh, but I believe that the Lord is strengthening you. So if you've been asking the Lord for strength, remember the joy of the Lord is your strength. So no matter what you're going through, the joy of the Lord is your strength. He has all the power. Amen, Sister uh, Parker. Thank you so much for being here. Good, good, good. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And so this is the month. This is the time. This is resurrection season. He's able to make all things new, but he's able to make them even better than they were. He's working on you. He's building you up, strengthening you. His power is at work. So I'm excited. This is a time of newness. It's a time of renewal. It's a time of refreshing, replenishing, rejuvenating, rejuvenation. So I hope that you feel the excitement that I feel. I believe that the Lord wants you to feel it. I want you to have joy unspeakable joy. I know that many of us, many are going through so much. I don't make light of it, but I'm going to share with you what the word says. The word says that we are to praise him. We are to have joy, unspeakable joy. We are to love, to love. So I hope that you can feel the love that I'm sharing with you from my heart. I love you all. I thank the Lord for ordering your steps this way. And let me just pray. Merciful God, our father in heaven, we thank you for being the one and only true living eternal God. We love you, Lord, and we know that by the stripes of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are healed. We thank you, Lord, for caring all about us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. We thank you, Lord, that every cell, every tissue, every organ, every system, every function, every molecule, every atom, our DNA, our bloodstream, all of our being, that they come into alignment with. They come into agreement with, oh Lord, your good and perfect, divine, sovereign will. We just love you, Lord God. We just love you and we know that you're with us. And so we expectantly await to see the manifestation of the healing that we already have. We expectantly await, Lord God, 
all the goodness that you have for us. Lord, we thank you that we can feel your touch from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Lord, we thank you for taking away anything and everything that's not like you. We thank you, oh God, for all of the blockages, oh Lord, that you've released so that all things are flowing according to your good and perfect divine sovereign will. We thank you that there's no more stagnation, Lord God. There are no more blockages, Lord God. We thank you that we are free indeed. We thank you that it is all good and that your mercy is new every morning. And Lord, we thank you for giving us the patience and the grace that we need to wait until we see the manifestation of that which has happened. We know that it's done in the spirit realm and we're just praying in agreement with and in alignment with your good and perfect divine sovereign will that it will be done right now on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, amen. Amen and amen. And as I was praying, I saw you, brother. I saw your, um, I saw your, ch uh, your chat comment about the Gregorian calendar. And yes, you know how I, I share that on my, with my, um, my prophetic words uh, that I, I share as the Lord leads me. And yes, we know that the calendars were changed uh, several times. And so uh, we even know with what we just experienced with uh, daylight uh, savings time that, uh, you know, but God is outside of time, so we might change the time, but God's timing and his appointments are always established. And we know that this uh, Gregorian calendar, uh, you know, we could get into that. It's leap year and all that good stuff, but I just don't have the time for that right now. But I appreciate your, your comment. And yes, there's a lot that goes on. But that's why I say we've got to follow. It's God's timing. God is outside of time. He created time uh, the fourth day, but it's his timing. And so we just uh, thank God for his appointed time. Again, I appreciate each and every one of you who was here. Uh, if it's the Lord's will, we'll be back um, two Saturdays from today. I believe that would be maybe the 30th. Uh, you know about the 8th. Yeah, you know about, okay. yeah, okay. Uh, so we'll be back about um, the, um, uh, I believe that's the 30th uh, of this month. So we're here three times this month. And I'll share some more for anyone who is, who is interested. In the comments, if you want me to talk a little bit more about times and seasons from a biblical perspective, the, uh, the, um, the, the prophetic biblical calendar versus the Gregorian calendar, I can share a little bit more about that next time as well. So just um, let me know in the comments um, if, if you want me to do that and anything else. Again, love you all. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful, blessed, Christ-centered day. See you real soon. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, that's it.